In Dead Cells, shields make up the core of a defensive playstyle. There is no better solution to a flawless biome clear or a boss fight than with the help of shields. My name is Psyche, and today's topic will be all about shields and parrying. The video itself is timestamped for your convenience, and here are the topics. So without further ado, let's start with the basics. Parrying can be achieved by tapping the shield button right before an enemy attack connects. Holding it will block instead, which only negates partial damage. Now, it may seem difficult at first, but once you get used to it, the timing is actually pretty generous. Currently, there is very little reason to block instead of parry. Health is just very important later on, especially at higher BC levels. And even if you take damage from blocking, it will still reset your kill streak. The only instance where I would say blocking is more advantageous than parrying is maybe if you're playing with the Spice Sword, because you get critical hits by actually taking damage. Parrying is what you should always try to do with shields. Generally speaking, try to tap the shield button as soon as you see an exclamation mark above an enemy's head, but timings can obviously vary. You can parry almost any type of attack, either melee or ranged. The only type of attacks you cannot parry are ground slam attacks, such as the bomber's dive, shockwave attacks, such as the ones from slammers, or light beam attacks, such as the ones from librarians. However, there seems to be an exception to this rule. The cocoon item from the Fatal Falls expansion can actually parry any type of attack in the game, even attacks that normally could not be parried by shields, including the before-mentioned Ground Slam, Shockwave, and Light Beam attacks. This is something I don't have too much experience with. I definitely have to try out the Cocoon a bit more to kind of get the feel for it. But speaking of which, some select weapons in the game also has a parrying property. The Iron Staff from Fatal Falls can parry melee attacks but not projectiles or bombs. The flashing fans from Bad Seed can deflect projectiles and bombs, but not melee strikes. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at a different topic. Unlike rolling, parrying does not have a cooldown. You can parry again immediately right afterwards. And this is how you're able to chain together parries within enemy attacks with no pauses in between. If done well, you essentially cannot take damage. This is important on higher boss cell levels as health becomes increasingly scarce. It's very beneficial to learn this mechanic early, maybe at around 2 or 3 BC. Much like taking curses, learning how to parry can also build up your confidence as a player. Now if you want to get really crazy, try to parry Inquisitor projectiles when you are cursed. I mean, it's technically impossible for you to mess it up. If you're cursed, you have a 100% chance to parry enemy attacks, otherwise you're just dead. With the help of training rooms in the 2.5 update, you can now safely practice against all the enemies in the game, including how to learn their movesets as well as learning their parry windows. The Inquisitor projectile is probably one of the first moves that you will learn how to parry, it's slow and you see it coming. Plus, you are gonna have to deal with these guys a lot in the future. The Rampager's dash from 3 BC and onwards is also something that you should try to get used to. It may seem scary at first with this really off-putting timing, but learning the parry window will help turn these Rampagers from being a threat in runs to being no threat at all. The failed experiment's dash attack is also quite easy to parry. On 4 slash 5 BC, since they try to teleport behind you, you can try to bait out this attack from a distance. As for bosses, you can practice against them with the practice rooms, as shielded runs feel quite different than shieldless runs. However, just keep in mind that these simulations cannot completely replicate what it's like to face them in an actual run. If you need help on bosses, primarily learning their movesets, I do have a separate guide for that. Alright, so now onto the part everybody is looking for my rankings for all the shields in the game. So here are my criteria. So it's gonna be slightly different than my normal tier lists. So the different tiers are overpowered, generally good, situational, and placeholder. Part of the reason I rate it like this is because all I really need my shield to do is to be able to parry. So there's technically no shield in the game that will actually harm your run. It's really just measured on how beneficial it is to you, which is what we're discussing next. Currently, there are 13 shields in the game excluding the old wooden shield. 
Now, it's unlikely more shields will get added in the future, and it's very unlikely that that existing shields will get nerfed or buffed again. This list should be relevant for a pretty long time. So let's start with the frontline shield. This shield I would say is just generally good. It's mostly used in red since you will probably have better options with other shields in survival. This comps very well with melee builds. There's not too much to say about it other than it's just pretty good on red. The Kajo I would say is a placeholder. It works well enough when you're just starting out the game because I know this is one of the shields that's unlocked right from the beginning. However, stun is not really a viable status. It can work pretty well on select enemies, but on bosses it's pretty much non-existent. It makes sense why it's weak since as you unlock more shields, the Kajo just gets outranked. Now the punishment shield is overpowered. This has historically been nerfed in the past, though even now it's still overpowered. This might actually be the best survival exclusive shield in the game. The AoE is huge and extremely beneficial in dealing in groups, especially clearing out small fries, including those little bats flying around. This whittles down the opposition quite swiftly, and the damage is actually very good in bosses. But for some reason I rarely see this shield in my runs, probably because the game doesn't want me to be overpowered. So next up we have the knockback shield, and I would say this is a placeholder. The knockback can sometimes interrupt with your attacks, since sometimes you're probably going to be running melee builds, and you really don't want to launch enemies backwards. It is cool if you can slam them into walls and deal additional damage, but this is pretty rare. I even debated about having this as a placeholder because knockback shield is the only shield I would argue that can kind of actually harm your build. Even as a placeholder, I sometimes debate about picking this up. The Rampart Shield is a very interesting item. Now this is going to be a hesitant situational tier for me. This has a very interesting mechanic. It's extremely useful to maximize your damage with slow melee weapons, and I wouldn't mind taking this if I had the Oven Axe, the Club, or anything that has a slow swing speed. The Rampart Shield actually has a pretty high learning cap in my opinion. For example, in a shovel run, what I'm doing here is that I'm parrying the first two melee strikes from Hannah the King, and since I know I get invulnerability, I'm just gonna ignore the boss's final strike and just hit him with my shovel. So this can create some very interesting dynamics on your fights. And overall, Rampart, I'm not saying it's a bad shield, it happens to be quite situational. Speaking of situational, next up is the Assault Shield. I did actually run this with Impaler, and it was a very unique experience. And this shield I would say probably comes down to personal experience with it. Some people like it and some people don't. The movement manipulation is a quirky little mechanic. I personally find this a little bit weird to use, but when I paired it with the Impaler, I had a really good time. That build was unlike anything I've done. So my recommendation is that just unlock this shield and try it out for yourself. The Bloodthirsty Shield is generally good. Now alongside the Frontline Shield, this is one of the few shields in the game that also has the red color. And just like the Frontline Shield, the Bloodthirsty Shield has good AoE, though I would probably prefer Punishment over this most of the time, simply because I would rather prefer one big burst of damage rather than damage over time from bleed. Plus, affixes are pretty easy to come by already, so it's not that difficult to get bleeding on your punishment shield anyways. But for a red scaling shield, I would say this actually competes with the frontline shield. Based on different situations, I take either one over the other. The greed shield, to my surprise, is actually pretty good. In the recent patch, they buffed the damage, and getting free gold in the early game is always a plus. If I saw this in the first couple of biomes, I would actually think twice if I saw this alongside punishment in the same chamber. So this is extremely unexpected, but the greed shield is actually fantastic in the early game, and I know the greed shield is unlocked right from the beginning of the game. If you haven't used this shield a lot, definitely try it out, it's actually not that bad. The spike shield does something very differently than the punishment shield. It does lack AoE, However, the damage on single targets are amazing. I can see how the spike shield performs even better than the punishment shield in some select cases, especially in bosses, since the spike shield has the highest parry damage out of every shield in the game. This will absolutely shred through bosses. It may have some trouble dealing with groups, 
but for some select biomes such as Slumbering Sanctuary, because all the enemies are mid-sized, you'll be able to take full advantage of the spike shield. This can get situational at times, but generally it's very good. The parry shield, I would say, is also a placeholder. Now, I guess this has some use if you're trying to learn how to parry, but other than practicing, there is very little reason to use the parry shield. Now, it does deflect projectiles very well, so it has some added utility against select ranged enemies or bosses, and you can put it in the backpack because the ranged effect from the parry shield will actually activate. But in terms of defensiveness, there are definitely better options out there. The Force Shield is the last shield to be ranked placeholder. Now, although I'm putting it in this tier, I actually used it once with the Alchemic Carbine as a sort of tank build. It has a very niche usage, and I do have that run featured on my channel if you want to check it out. The main problem with the Force Shield's mechanic is that you can't do anything while you are holding it up which makes it very restrictive of what you can do with it. The idea with that Alchemic Carbine build is to just pop all of my skills and turrets and just hold up the shield and watch everything die in front of me. So overall, it's an interesting idea, but I just think there's very little reason to use this and there's not a lot of ways you can get creative with it. The Thunder Shield, I would say, is overpowered. Now, alongside Punishment, this was also one of the few shields that were nerfed in a recent patch, but the utility and the sheer amount of damage potential is absolutely massive. The Thunder Shield has a very large AoE ring, and it's way larger than Punishment and Bloodthirsty Shield. Oh, and did I mention this ring can actually interrupt boss attacks, which makes some of the later bosses absolutely trivial. The Thunder Shield is one of those things that it does not matter how much you nerf it. By design, it's just way too powerful. But at the same time, it kind of makes sense why it's in this tier, because this is one of the last items you'll ever unlock in the game, because it is from 5 BC. And last but not least, we have the Ice Shield. This is situational, I would say. At times, I would probably prefer this over the Cudgel, but just like Stun, Freeze isn't very viable in bosses and I would rather just prefer damage instead. Now, there are ways you can kind of make this work, maybe if you're running Nutcracker, maybe for some reason you just rather want a shield instead of Frost Blast or Ice Bow. In that case, the Ice Shield can fit in those types of builds. But overall, I would say Freeze is just kind of situational. So that's it for the Shields Guide. Here is the full tier list for Shields. Hopefully you learned a few things today. If you did and you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like, as it really helps me out. Anyways, go out there and have some fun parrying and progressing in Dead Cells. Thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you all next time.